Hello everyone. Welcome to our final session in this Essentials of the IT Help Desk series. Uh, we're going to, it's going to be a few more minutes probably for a few people to trickle in, um, but I'll kind of give the recap, I guess, as it were, of the uh, previous sessions. We talked about different ways that our help desk can help power your, uh, your, you know, IT staff to address problems, how your IT, how your employees can interact with our Teams app and how they can uh, yeah, I, I submit their questions, submit their issues, submit their requests through our system, how they can easily be tracked, how they can be processed by staff to follow through to completion. Uh, and so we've talked about a lot of these different things, how we integrate with different systems as well. Uh, but what I want to talk about today is the integration with Nitro, which drives a lot of this. So we're going to talk a lot about the Nitro Studio piece of it and the parts of it that would be relevant to customizing and configuring this help desk for your uh, for your usage. Uh, so we're going to be talking about that today. It is uh, only a half hour and there's a lot. We usually give a 12 hour training course on Nitro. If you're interested in learning more about Nitro specifically, we can talk about that. Or if you, uh, you know, if you're using our product or using Nitro and you're interested in that training course, let us know. Uh, we can definitely uh, dive into that. But the essentials today are we're going to be talking about the forms, custom actions and workflows uh, more or less. So again, my name is James Restivo with Crow Canyon Software. I appreciate you all taking a, a moment out of your busy day to join me on this webinar and learn a little bit more about what we're offering and what we're doing. So as you've learned from previous sessions, we've got this IT help desk that runs in the SharePoint platform, has integration with Teams, and it has uh, some great power behind it to make it run the way you want it to run. Uh, I, I'm just going to pause for a moment here and let you know if there's at any point a uh, time you need to ask a question, feel free to do that in our questions box, which is part of the GoToWebinar uh, panel that you have on your screen. You should see questions. You can pop a question in there. We can get to it during the course of this workshop or webinar today, or we can get to it afterwards, however, uh, whatever happens. Uh, but we do have a short period of time, so kind of really just kind of dive right into it and talk about what Nitro is doing behind the scenes for this help desk and how you can best utilize it for your configuration of the help desk, for your customization of the help desk. And so uh, what we're going to do is show you where you can get into that aspect of the IT help desk and how you can, yeah, how you can uh, access the different tools that we have. So from your help desk backend, which would be this, the SharePoint site where we deploy the help desk, which is essentially what we're, we're looking at here, you will be able to get to the application administration space. So if we go to the gear over here, we can pop open the gear icon, go to application administration. That's part. That's a link we add in there as part of the installation. And it's going to bring up our application admin area, which I didn't go through yet, but it has a lot of, or maybe I touched on it in, in previous sessions, but it's got a lot of interesting stuff in here to help you configure it. But today I want to focus on the Nitro aspect of it and the forms and workflows and whatnot. So you'll see as part of the application admin, you'll have this Crocane and Nitro apps link that we can click over to. And there you'll see some of the common features, common things that we're dealing with with Nitro. There's a link over to the Nitro Studio itself. There's the workflows, uh, there's approval processes, things like that. These are really the main ones. Email, if you're using incoming email, we set that up. That's kind of more of a one-time thing. But if you, uh, you know, what we're going to talk about is kind of more ongoing stuff that you might want to change or tweak as you go through usage of the program and find things that works, things that don't work, you know, what, what, you know, kind of make it work for your scenario. So what you're going to do is click on the Crocan Nitro Studio link here. That's going to pop open this, this page where you can access the elements of Nitro specific to the site. So you can see we're in the specific IT professional site. That's our demo site. And this gives you access to all the different elements of Nitro. Again, we're not going to go through all of this because, like I said, it could be a whole in-depth, you know, 10 to 12 hour training course. Uh, there's a lot in there. I'm going to do my best to give you the high, highest level I possibly can to at least just give you the insights of what it's doing. But the heart of it, really, the, the three kind of main things that are the heart of what we're doing for the processing in the help desk itself on a day-to-day -day basis are the forms, the custom actions, and the workflows which those are, you know, again, come pre-configured out of the box. There's a lot of things in there already. There's custom actions already pre-built. Forms obviously already pre-built. 
workflows are already built in there. But you know, at some point in time, you might want to make an adjustment or change what is going on, make a make a tweak here and there, add a column, remove a column, things like that. That's where this Nitro Studio gives you the power to do those things and really customize and configure this help desk for your specific scenario. Way way more customizable than you know a lot of places out there. A lot of, you know some other help desk systems you have to go through you know jump through so many hoops to actually get any kind of change made to your form or change made to a process uh you know this this gives you the power to do that pretty easily and uh conveniently and quickly really so we're going to start with the forms and one thing you'll notice on the forms is that well this is the back end form that you see in your help desk site and this is essentially what the staff would have access to. And so they would come in and see this information and then you can modify where the layout is, you can modify the tabs, you can modify a lot of things about it. Uh, but essentially, this is what you would configure for your help desk staff, but there is also a, uh, a portal ticket, which is what the portal, uh, the, the people coming to the portal would see. So you can actually configure that from the same space here. You can see we have a portal ticket as a separate form. And if we open that, you'll see it looks like what you would see when you pull it up on the portal. So you got the one space to do both of these things. You can manage it, hit the manage forms, then toggle between the two. You got the portal ticket form and the back end ticket form so that you can manage them separately. And what the user sees is not the same thing as what the staff people see in the back end. And then you can you can rearrange it based on what's going to make sense for your users to fill out and, and also for your staff to work with it. So it's very easy to move things around on here. It's a drag and drop WYSIWYG, you know, what you see is what you get interface where you can move things around. If you want to add, pri move priority to a different space, you can do that. We can uh, move it up or down within the section, but if we wanted to put it into a different section, we could do that by popping open our form controls on the left-hand side over here, and we can pull up priority. Uh, just start typing it in, it'll search it. It'll tell you where it is already. You can see on the hover over, it tells me it's in the ticket details tab already or section. We can drag it over and put it into a different section if we want. Uh, I think once I save that, maybe it's, maybe I have to publish it. It'll tell me, um, yeah, I might have to publish it and tell me it's in the requester details also, but uh, we can see where those columns exist. And then if we ever want to remove them, we can just hit that X like I just did. For that one, we can remove it and say, you know what, we don't want the end user to set the priority at all. You know, or we don't want them to categorize the ticket at all. That's something the staff would do. So those are things that you can do to remove fields, add fields. We want if you want to create a new field, we can create a new column where you can add a new SharePoint column. You can add one of our specific Nitro columns, which have a little bit different functionality from the out, uh, out of the box SharePoint columns. You know, Nitro lookup, you can do cross-site lookup. You know, associated items give you gives you that uh, repeating row kind of feel to it. So there's a few different things that we're adding in beyond the base SharePoint layer that gives you more control over what you can do with the form and how you can how you can do it. Uh, so there's a lot of different things you can do here, including up to uh, uh, Nitro Manage columns, which are a little they're not there's they're not tied into a SharePoint column in the back end so it's just kind of information you can capture on the form but you know a lot of different things that you can put in there with uh, different different form controls we can change the look and feel let's say we wanted to have our end users look at this as a tabbed interface rather than a section you know with these sections with drop downs uh, where we can toggle those uh, you know open or expanded or collapsed we can change it to tabs so we can just simply make it closer to the back end form and show it as tabs that might be a little harder for the user to fill out because then they have to go up and click the tab, which is why we did the section layout for the end users. But that's up to you. If you feel like it's better layout for you than and your team, then that's that's fine. So you can go through and manage add add new new sections as you need to. So if we want to add a new section under form controls, we could do that. We can drop a new section in here, give it a name. You know, manage the layout. You can have different numbers of columns. So a lot of different things you can do with with this forms designer that can make the form look much different, much better, much uh, you know specific to what you need. If you want to remove these, it's very easy to remove the fields. We can just go ahead and, and remove the whole tab. We can remove the whole field. Um, you know, there's a lot of the things you can do there. And you know, we can put priority back in there if you wanted to, just drag and drop. If we wanted to, um, you know, change the like change this layout on this tab, we can do that. We would configure this tab, change the label position. 
hit apply, you can see it makes it a little different. You can see it, it made that box bigger instead of having it just kind of squeezed over to the right. All right, just hit apply, you can see your changes. And the other cool thing too is there's a preview option where you can go through and see what does this form look like for my users. And you say, okay, you know, that doesn't quite look right. Let me change something or, and or you can even test permissions. If you have your rules applied to different fields on the form, you can do that. So let's say you have a particular category and issue type where you need to prompt the user for more information. Well, we have a way to do that with our rules-based uh, permissions where you can set the conditions to say, if category equals X and issue type equals Y, uh, you can have a different field pop up, a new text field pop up, and just really gives the user a prompt for information. Or even if they have category issue type uh, uh, you know, selected, you can even have uh, instructions here. So you can drag and drop a, what we call line HTML control, which really it just puts a line in there. You can just remove that and put whatever text you want into the field, and that will apply it to the form. And this has permissions around it, so you can even uh, give some instructions to the user, sort of like a, a de facto KB in, in, in a sense, where you can, you know, you can highlight it if you wanted to make it bold and really obvious when it appears on the form. You can say, uh, you know, make it bigger, make it red. You know, I like, I kind of like this feature, which is why I'm harping on it a little bit. It's pretty cool. But you can put whatever text you want. You can center it if you want to make it centered into the the form. It gives you a lot of flexibility there to say. You know, you can use the permissions rules that we have here to say when category equals X and issue type equals Y, let's show this field and make that text uh, visible. So you can have different types of things like that. Just another way to maybe help your user self-serve. Maybe they'll see that information and say, oh, hey, look, that answers my question. I don't need to submit this ticket anymore. Or it directs them to a space where there's a particular process, like maybe they have a question about, how do I update my benefits, or how do I, you know, re-enroll for uh, some some you know gym membership or something that your company might offer? You can have instruction manual here, or how do I request new software? How do I request request new hardware? You know, things like that can be popped open here. You can have a link in there, like right. You can have a link to another website. Click this link, go find out the information. Just another way to present information to your end users and and give them maybe a way to self serve uh, before they even submit the ticket. But that's what you can do with the form. You can do a lot of different things there that, uh, you know, for, for the layout. Like I said, I mean, we we have a training program that really just focuses on this piece for three hours. So I'm <laughs> really, really giving you the high level uh, as much as I can. If, you want, if you're interested in going in more depth with this, certainly let us know. We can certainly do that. But in the interest of time, I'm going to move beyond, beyond the forms and show you that there's actions that can be taken on the form from the end user, either the end user perspective or the staff user perspective. And we have a lot of these things pre-configured. So let me go back to our ticket site over here and show you some of these custom actions that we've built into the system itself. And you'll see them right here, self-assign, assign to someone, and resolve. Kind of common things you might want to do. You can select an item and run it without having to open the item. So you know this ticket is unassigned and you want to assign it to yourself. Well, I'm just going to go ahead and hit the self-assign button. That's a custom action. It's invoked when there is a button clicked and that is a manual invocation of that action. And that could be a whole process. There could be a whole different, lot of different things going on there uh, with the custom actions. And I'll show you what the uh, kind of all those different possibilities uh, in, in brief. But it's separate from the workflows because those are both business process things that we have in the background here that can drive automation, drive your you know, ease of use of the program with these quick actions that you can take. And the custom action is the one where you manually say, I want to kick this off right now. I'm going to click the button. Workflows work similarly, but in a event-based system where it's when an item is saved, something happens, or when an item is assigned, something happens, or when an item is updated or a ticket is updated, something happens. So, or even time-based, when we hit the uh, due date of the ticket, it's going to send out an email. That's where the workflows come into play. So there are two sides of the same coin in that sense of the business process, just different ways you can manage it. But let me just show you what the custom actions look like and what the ones we built out of the box look like and where you can potentially add some functionality to it. You'll see there's custom actions, a tab I have open here. 
we actually can get to it from the Nitro Studio app uh, page. We can go to custom actions and that's going to pop open our custom actions tab where you can see the different actions and the different lists. You can actually see, I think, all the different lists where we have actions created. And you probably want to focus on the, the tickets list because that's where the main bulk of your action is going to be happening. We have a couple different experience styles for building the, the custom action, and this is true for workflows as well. We have what's called the legacy experience, which is the way we've always done things. I'll show you what that looks like. We open this up, and it's going to give you some settings at the top to you know, say what the action is. That's what's going to appear in your form as the title of the button for the action. You can, sh you can decide where to show it, right? If we want to show it in the display form only, we can uncheck list ribbon. Or if we want to enable it for multiple items, we can check list ribbon. You can select multiple items and run the action. And then the nice thing about it too is we have some permissions around it. So you determine who runs, who gets to do this, who is who is allowed to run this action. And in this case, we have it really only available in the back end, so we don't have any permissions around it. But you might want to just for security purposes, safety's sake, put in a condition that says only the members of the SharePoint group of IT staff can run this action. Or we have certain conditions that need to be met before this action can be run. So those things can be in place right here, and that's where you put them in place. And then we have the different actions. This one's really simple. It's just doing a one update, which is taking the per current logged in user and assigning them, you know, putting them in the assigned staff field on the ticket. Really simple, just one update list item action. What that looks like from here, is a, you know, a predefined column value. We're basically just saying assigned staff is going to be me, which is the current logged in user. And that's it, very simple. But there's a whole cadre of, of, of actions that you can take here from adding list items, updating list items, deleting list items, you know, uh, all the way through to uh, uploading documents, generating documents, sending emails, probably one of the more common ones. We even have an option to send a text message if you wanted to use that, that capability. And then we have different ways to extend the functionality to executing scripts, ex invoking web services, invoking workflows. So you can actually get fairly complicated with this or, or complex. You know, you could say a ticket comes in about a, you know, needing to do a reset or a query on a database. And we can, you know, let's say it's a common question. You have an invoke web service action that's going to go and query that database, get the information you need. You can make that part of your custom action. So when that type of ticket comes in, you can say, boop, okay, I'm just gonna hit that button and make that happen. Uh, you can get information from other lists. You can invoke other custom actions, invoke Azure functions if you wanna get over there and do that. Um, setting variables can, can be used in more complex actions. Again, I'm not gonna get into the great nitty gritty of any one of all these things, but if you have any specific questions or wanna look at these in any greater detail, you can pop a question in the box or you can follow up with those afterwards to dig into this in more detail. But I just want to give you a sense that there's a lot you can do with just a simple push of a button. And you can have multiple, and of course, you can have multiple actions within your uh, your one custom action, right? It's not You're not limited to one action at a time. You can have as many of these as you want, as long as it makes sense for that. When you click that button, run these actions, we can do that. And one thing we can do here with the legacy is that you can put conditions on each of the actions. So if you, if when you hit that button and the conditions aren't met, it's going to skip that action, essentially. So you can have a whole list of actions and, and you can have, even have like three actions right on top of each other. One is in this scenario, two is in that scenario, three is in this other scenario. And then use your conditions to decide which one is going to run at the time you click the button. So with all those same actions, available, we also have what we call the designer interface for creating custom actions, which is a lot, I think a lot cooler, <laughs> frankly, but uh, it is a very, very neat uh, system. And now you get that visual workflow, kind of the visual indication of what's happening and how things are flowing. We have these gateways so you can control if things go one way or another way. So we can do, um, you know, we can do an update list item, just drag, again, kind of drag and drop interface, which is really cool. We can just uh, drag that on here. There it goes, okay, move my label. And then we can put another add list item over here. So in, in, the, in the gateway here, what this is, is a conditional thing where you can determine under which condition is it, which route is it gonna go? So now we have a switch, basically a switch essentially, 
where we say if condition A is met, we're going to, you know, if the conditions are met, let's go this way. If the conditions are not met, let's go this way. We can cascade, you know, if I have a question about how do I do multiple uh, conditions with different different scenarios, well, you can just simply have multiple gateways. That's no problem. We can have as many of these things on here as we want, and we can make it uh, fairly complex, I suppose, or, or simple, depending on what you need. You can have different end nodes. Again, you know, I'm, like I said, I'm not going to go through this in, in excruciating detail because we can get really bogged down in all the minutia of this if we really wanted to. But uh, it, it essentially gives you a way to build out these flows that are going to be you know, easily understood, easily recognizable as to what you're doing. And so you can kind of see, okay, it goes, you know, it goes this way, then it goes that way, then, it, you know, of course we have to probably have to have an end node or we could go and, and connect it over to, um, a, you know, the, the other end node over here. So kind of however you want, want to display it and look at it, you can move these things around. You got that, uh, you know, kind of drag like that. You change the label names, of course, um, you know, option A, option B, you know, things like that. So you can go and label those and kind of know which way you're going to be going through the process to get to where you want to go. And the nice thing about this, as opposed to the legacy, is that you have these error messages here that tell you, you know, something's wrong. You know, we haven't configured anything, right? So it's it's going to tell me that it's, it's not configured. But once you get it all configured, all those will become, uh, you know, the, 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 those messages will disappear and you'll know that you're good to go. And it won't even let you save it. Like if, even if I try to save this, it's you know it's giving me errors all over the place, telling me I can't even save it. So it just gives you another way to to do it. And the other really cool feature I think uh, of this is the debug option, where you can actually go through and debug these and say this is um, you know how's it how's it working? How's it, how's this work? And actually, what I can do is I can show you that in brief. Uh, let's do an update. So this is actually going to be basically the same as that self assign. We can do the same same thing. Uh, self assign and we're going to do that simple column mapping where assign staff equals me and you know that's real simple you know it doesn't have to be too complicated and what the thing what we can do now with the debug option and I think it's going to oh, I got this extra node over here I'll get rid of that debug option I got to specify a title that's okay I'll just call it self assign no problem there. Uh, two. All right. This is our habit. So it's not going to let me. Uh, so it's good. So you're seeing all the all the messages that tell you, you, you you're not going to be able to mess up too much, which is kind of cool. And with the debug option, we can it just run through it and kind of show you what the uh, what it looks like. So I'm just going to pick one of these items and run through it, and you've got all these details about what's happening with this with this uh, action. So it's validating permissions, saying everything's good to go. We're going to the self-assign option, and it's going to let you know if it's, it's good to go or not, if we had some conditions around it, or you know, if you had gateways especially, it would tell you which gateway you're going to be uh, going down, and, or which direction it, you know, was, was encountered in that node. And you can see with the green, it's got the, you know, everything's okay, it's, it's run the action, and now it's ready to, well, it's done. I mean, that, that was it. You can move this around, you can move things around here. You can make, oh, I can't really make this shorter in this scenario, but that's okay. Uh, we can make this shorter here because there's no need for it. That's the nice thing. It's drag and drop, pretty easy. But I think it's really cool. And, and again, there is a lot you can do here. There's import export type of features, etc. But this gives you a way, again, kind of tying back to the help desk, gives you a way to build out more processes to say, hey, you know what? I like the fact that I can do a self assign, but I'd really like to have another action here. Yeah. Now again, we do have a notification in our help desk out of the box that will notify the assigned staff, so we don't need to add a send mail action here. Although maybe, maybe you do. Maybe you do want to send it to someone else, like not the assigned staff person, and say, okay, you know, every time we do a self assign, I want to alert, um, you know, the IT manager at you know company abc.com, right? So we can now notify this person and uh, and, and add to this action. Uh, see, I think it's going to let me send mail. Let me do this. Send mail. Uh, oh, God. Of course, I got decide, to decide who it's going to go to. And, oh, you know what? I set the from address. Let me do the to. IT manager at companyabc.com. And I'll change who it's coming from. You can do like just a no reply. I 
at companyabc.com, something like that, and get rid of the one I don't want. Hit OK. Now you see, now you have another action there, and then we can just uh, keep adding actions as needed. Let's say we want to send them a message too. We can do that. It uh, requires a tw Twilio setup, but you can keep adding in actions here and, and seeing how things go, or you can move things around. You say, you know what, I actually don't, I want to do the send mail first, which I don't know why would it matter, but you could just move this around and do the send mail first. So it is the easy way to, to move these things around, change the order of actions. If you need to change the order of actions, you can do that. And see, once I make the connection there, I, well, I haven't configured that one, uh, that's good. It's, so it's giving me the message, but if I get rid of it, you can see it's, everything's good to go. All right, so that's the the custom actions, and then real briefly, we just have a few minutes here. Uh, you know, the the like I said, the custom actions and the workflows are kind of two sides of the same coin in the sense of business processes with a lot of the same functions, a lot of same actions that you see over here. So the workflows are going to look pretty pretty similar, but they, they again like they work a little differently in the sense of having more uh, event-based kind of scenario where an item is updated or it's bot triggered if you're using our, our Nitro bot, uh, you know, or an item is added, then we're going to run this, or we do a query, or we, so there's different scenarios where these workflows would kick off, but you have the similar kind of idea where you have the legacy experience and then you have the designer experience as well. Uh, so we go into tickets. And there it is, okay. And you see you've got that same designer interface that we were just looking at with the custom actions and all the different options you have over here on the left hand side basically the same things create items the same as add list item but just you know all the same kind of stuff that you can do uh, but yeah so you can change around the existing workflows if you want this again you're going to have the ability to do that if i cancel this i'm not going to save it yep that's fine i don't care uh leave that and you know if you wanted to change what happens with the close you could do that uh, you can you pull that open. Okay. So if you, you can change that action around, add more items in here. Uh, if you're on the workflows, you do the same thing, where if you wanted to change what happens with the workflow, you can go into the workflow itself and do that. Let's say you wanted to change this adaptive card process. We can open that up and and do that. So that's all available to your administrators of the system, right? You have to have managed web permission access or managed website permission level to, to do any of this stuff. But uh, if, if you have full control, uh, you're a full control user of the site, you can access any of these Nitro elements and do that. There's other, you know, lots of other things we can do with the Nitro Studio branding aspect of it. There's reports, which we didn't even touch on in this, this workshop today. Uh, there's a whole bunch of other things that we can get into in more detail, but really just I want to kind of like scratch the surface here of this underlying tool set that you get with the help desk. It's for the one site. It's it's in that help desk site. It's there for you to uh, manage these forms, update these forms. It's there for you to create new custom actions, modify the existing custom actions. It's there for you to modify the existing workflows, modify the branding. You know, we're giving you a lot of the power to do this stuff literally placing the power in your hands, I guess you could say, and uh, letting you do that. So that's, this is part of it. Like, this is not an additional thing. I mean, if you want to use it on other sites across your tenant, then, you know, yeah, sure. That's a different, different conversation. But for the, if you're looking at our IT help desk and purchasing that IT help desk, you get this, this is part of it. And so it's the underlying tool set that comes behind all this. Uh, you can do a lot with it. And, you know, I really, you know, like I said, I really just was scratching the surface today on the on the different things you can do with it. But if there, again, if there's anything you want to dig into in more detail, we have the questions box open. You can always send us an email and uh, g give us a drop us a line, give us a call, whatever. What we're happy to work you through. We're all Nitro experts here on this side. We've been working with it, living, breathing this stuff for many, many years. So, and you know, and especially with IT help desk processing, we've been living and breathing that for a long time as as well. So. If you're interested in learning more, certainly give us a call. Certainly send us an email. We'll have a conversation with you, talk about your needs, talk about what, where you can get this to be a successful implementation on your side, and we'd be really happy to hear from you. So with that, we are at the end of our session today. I appreciate everyone for coming along. If you've been to all these sessions, I appreciate that as well. And uh, I look forward to hearing from any, any one of you or all of you. Uh, so again, thanks for coming. Have a great rest of your day and have, if you're in the U.S., have a great 4th of July weekend uh, and uh, talk to you all soon. Take care.